In this video, we're going to discuss d orbitals as valence electrons. So if we think of an element like vanadium, vanadium is going to be argon, 4s2, 3d3. And vanadium can make vanadium plus, vanadium 2 plus, vanadium 3 plus, vanadium 4 plus, and vanadium 5 plus. Well, we have to lose one electron. So the core is still the same. It still looks like argon. I have some 4s's. I have some 3d's. When you lose one electron, when you become a cation, the energy level of your orbitals shift slightly. By losing an electron, the interactions of all your orbitals change a little bit, and they all change their energies. The net effect is that while filling electrons, the 4s is lower in energy than the 3ds, when removing, as the system changes, it is actually easier to remove from the 4s than from the 3ds. And so we end up with 4s1, 3d3. This trend continues. Vanadium 2, you have argon, 4s0. 3d3. Finally, I'm out of 4s electrons, and so I take out of my 3ds, and I will continue to do so until I run out of both at my final charge state. To reiterate that, when removing electrons from your transition metals, it is easier to remove from the s orbital in general than it is to remove from the d. At first, this seems counterintuitive, but it's really because the system that we're creating as a cation is quite different than the neutral atom. The orbital interactions, electron repulsion, the shielding, all of that changes a little bit. And so the energetics of the orbitals alter enough that it is removing from the s orbital before the d orbital. In terms of interactions with other atoms, let's talk about valence electrons when we look at transition metals. Normally when we had something like sodium, its last electron was 3s1, we make to magnesium, its last electron was 3s2, Go down the row here, potassium, it's 4s1, calcium, it's 4s2, and then you get to scanium where it goes into 3d1. But when we talked about Z effective for our orbitals, we kind of skipped the whole transition metal block. We just ignored all of these ones. We went s orbitals, and then we went p orbitals, and those we saw every column we moved to the right, we saw a greater z effective. So what was going on in the transition metals? How do we go from 2 to 3 but skip 10 elements in the path? Well, when I think about my orbitals for a minute, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. When we were calculating out z effective, it was equal to protons minus core electrons. But our core electrons are all the electrons in earlier n values. Because of the interactions of these very close energies of the 4s and 3d, the 3d, while they're higher in energy, they are from an earlier n value. If we just strictly take our calculation at face value, all those 3d electrons should be core electrons, despite that they're at the higher energy. And so if we think of scandium, well, it is element 21. 
So it has 21 positives. And its core, well, we said it ended in 3D1. So it was 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D1. Despite that the 3D are our highest energy, they're part of the earlier shells. Our 4S2 is our highest shell. When I go from calcium to scandium, so calcium had 20 protons, so it was 20 minus all the earlier electrons. Well, those earlier electrons are 2, 4, 10, 12, 18. So there was a plus 2 for calcium. It was in the second column. When we do this for scandium, well, it has one more proton, it has 21, but it also has the d orbital. And so it sees 19 core electrons for a plus 2. In fact, every single element we then use, titanium, next in line, number 22. Well, it has 22 protons. It ends in 3D2, but that just means those 4S electrons see one more core electron. They see 20 core electrons. Now, this isn't precise, and in another video we'll discuss what's going on with the wave functions that makes them a little not exactly plus two. But the net effect is while going through the transition metals, for every element we move, we get one more proton, but we also get one more core electron. Despite being in the highest energy orbitals, those three Ds are an earlier shell. And so as far as our Z effective calculation is concerned, while going through the transition metals, we don't change our Z effective. And the truth is, the attractive force of electrons to the metals are somewhat similar. They don't change significantly through the metals. There is a difference, and we'll discuss some of it in electronegativity, but it's not as great as we would expect. And a large part of this is because those d orbitals really do look like core electrons as far as the charge shielding effects are concerned.